don't know where to go. Hi. Hi, there we go. There we go. Thank you. I, mean myself. you. I can hear you. This is good. So are you you're ready for almost ready for Christmas? Are you ready? Um, I think today I finally feel ready. I didn't yesterday. <laughs> yeah. well, but I feel ready today. How about you? Uh I think we're all ready. I mean, stuff's wrapped. Uh, I think we're ready. There you uh, go. Of course, who knows what tomorrow will bring. But, but like, I I did all my st stuff online. Uh, I was told where people wanted. Here you go. Right. Done. That's good. So, uh, just, uh, I'll tell you what we're going to talk about a lot of them I did uh, like challenges of virtual virtual learning your career okay. uh oh moving your camera push the stream back so I can see <laughs> so I can see you yeah so you can see uh, ladies and gentlemen welcome to this last live episode before the holidays of my South Jersey journey. My guest today is the art teacher from Absecon School District. I've known her for about, I guess, 10, shall I, fifth? No, not, not just fifth. 15, let's just say 10. Please, <laughs> please, to me. please welcome Carly Broom, Miss Carly Broomhead is my last guest before we go on holiday break. Yes, well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here with you. Thank, thank you for being my, my guest just before Christmas. So my First question, um, uh, what inspired you to teach art? Wow, a lot of different things, I guess. Um, first and foremost, I grew up in a family of artists of different varieties. Um, my father is a very talented carpenter and draftsman, metal worker. Um, he's kind of done all of it. My mother, was a musician and dancer. I have three older sisters who have dabbled in all of the above. Um, so I think I always was around it, grew up with it. Um, even crafts in general. My grandmother um, taught us all how to knit and cross stitch and crochet and those types of things. So I guess I always just leaned towards doing things with my hands. Um, painting, drawing, all of the above, and um, had a really, had a teacher, believe it or not, I was a second grade, my second grade teacher told my mother um, that I was talented and she should put me in art lessons. So um, that happened at a pretty early age and I just stuck with it. Had some, I didn't know really that I wanted to teach art probably until I got into high school. Um, I loved my high school art teachers and the experiences I had there. Um, and my father and is, was also a teacher for 38 years. He taught auto shop, metal shop, and wood shop. Um, and my mother also went to college to be a social studies teacher. So I think just the arts and teaching were in my blood. <laughs> well, well, <there laughs> for lack you, of a better reason. Yeah, there you go. Just yeah. what you say you're you've got the family aspect you have uh, your excuse me your sisters were teach uh, dancers i mean and art form comes in different forms you yeah. have dancing you have singing you have the actual art itself i mean 
poetry, that's considered art. It's like you name it, you find it in, in anything, really. That's true. That is very true, you know? Um, even, you know, I was thinking the other day, one of the things I do on the side is I decorate cakes, I do a lot of baking, and I think that's an artistic outlet as well. There's a lot of creativity and artwork in, um, you know, the culinary arts as well. Right, because, and I've seen your cakes on, on uh, Facebook, and, and, that, and col just as we, you said, culinary arts, you're designing the cake, sure, and it's not just, um, not, and I've seen people do like, like masterpieces on like Christmas cookies. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's an art form too. Mm -hmm. Baking, cooking, it's all forms of art in different uh, aspects. Right, you talk to any chef too and they'll tell you how they plate a meal, you know, where they put the, the protein and where they put the, the different colors they plan out of the foods that go on the plate and how they, interact with each other is just as much a part of the creation of the meal. Right. Because, yeah, you've got your your main meat, then you have your uh, vegetable. I'm trying to remember from that lesson that we went to in eighth grade. What, about oh, that's right. A Smithville. A Smithville. That was, seems like forever ago, because it was. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I, wasn't that long ago. Wasn't that long ago. It just feel, feels long ago. When I first started this up in November, because I did a couple trial tapes and made sure it sounded good, made sure I knew what I was doing. And it, my, my first guest was... Uh, Mr. White, and he said, mm -hmm. well, don't you know you've been out of here for almost 10 years? I said, no, no, it's not 10 years. 10 years, yeah. He's right, and Jacob, if you recall, the first time you had me as a teacher, you came to my room in fourth grade. So, ooh. So fourth all the way through to eighth grade. So, yeah. um, you know, we met even longer ago than that. <laughs> no. I I was a little I was a little off by my math in the introduction, but <laughs> it's okay. It, it, it's been it's been a long time, and then you know we've done different things together in the school when they had pedal paddle run. We, uh, you did you did you do lips lip sync? I did a couple years. I did help out a few years in a row and always did at least, if I couldn't be there for rehearsals, I always did the um, program or the backdrop for the stage and like decorating the stage. Um, you know, even back, as far back as when Mr. Rogers and Mrs. Kamak started it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny when I was talking to Mr. White when I had him on, I guess about a month ago, he said, well, we still have lip sync, but gym show's not a thing anymore. I said, that's funny how, you know, time passes on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think that's also part of the natural progression of things, especially in a school system. Um, as new people come in, it kind of breathes new life into um, the opportunities that we you know can give to our students so as um, people come in with different interests you'll see new um, clubs being made things like that new interests that teachers kind of bring in to the school system as well so without um, a strong gymnastics program there's really not a base for the gym show anymore but what we do have um, and they started last year and you probably heard from him was a really strong volleyball team so we're in the middle school competitive volleyball league, which we weren't before. So I think that, you know, things change, but in a lot of cases, it's a good thing. You know, it just brings new opportunities to all those involved. Oh yeah, and you know what they say, change 
change is good, change is, uh, change is um, necessary for a lot of things. Just, just like you said, I remember I had a teacher, I think it was my junior year of high school, she taught, she taught in the uh, media, media video production category. The, the guy that I had the year before her was like, he, he knew what he was, I mean, don't get me wrong, she, she knew what she was doing too, but just as you said, the teaching styles from person to person really vary because he was more relaxed and then the following year, I take a higher level, well, basically the same thing, just instead of one, it was two. And she was more like, uh, she was uh, tough, tougher than he was. But you probably learned just as much from both of them. Right. Exactly. Very styles. Yeah. exactly. And the, ex the expectation was there too. Yeah. I kind of experienced that a little bit in college. My um, undergrad degree was art education, but where I went to school, I went to Rowan. And at the time you had to have a minor, they called it a specialization. Um, and I specialized in graphic design thinking that if I couldn't get a teaching job, that that would be the next safest career. And when I was taking my graphic design courses, somewhere through, I wanna say midway through, I think we had to do four different graphic design courses. And I had the same professor for the first two. Um, and he was very detailed and very methodical and um, would give us longer periods of time to kind of work on things. And then by my third semester, we had an adjunct professor and she was working as a graphic artist in Philadelphia and in New York City for a firm. And she was um, much more fast paced. Like she was all about the deadline, you know, but that was her experience because that's what she was living and breathing in that career at that moment. Um, so I think the different styles like really gave us a feel for what that would be like as a career. You know, like we got the base of here's how you develop and design this or that. Um, and then by the time she came in, it was, you know, this is what a fast paced work environment would really feel like. Yeah, because well, like you said, and like I said in discuss in my last question, like people, whether you're high school, college, you have to get used to the different styles. Mm -hmm. Because you can't get st stuck on one uh, one form of teaching for your one form of anything, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, uh, abs do, have you taught anywhere else besides Absec? I did. When I left college, um, my first job was for a maternity leave position um, in Brigantine. So I taught for one year in Brigantine. And then by the following year, um, the position in Absecon was available. So I applied there and was hired there. So and, and you've been I've been there ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't left. <laughs> and I that's going to branch off into my next question. I was told a couple of weeks ago, well, yeah, Mr. Broomhead told me and then Mr. White told me, you're, you're teaching what, the entire building this year? I am. Um, due to our hybrid schedule um, and due to students who have already selected, some students selected all virtual learning as an option and we have students in-house. Um, I believe they told you full day, full five days for the elementary school and we were hybrid for the middle school. Um, it just made more sense for all the specials to be virtual. So all of their specials are virtual. So I'm not seeing any students live in person in the building other than the ones that I, you know, come in contact throughout the day with. Um, so I am servicing K to eight 
online, as is um, Spanish and music and phys ed as well. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So, uh, of course, I, of course, uh, Mr. White's teaching fifth grade this year, mm -hmm. so I couldn't ask this. So, since you're not seeing kids, I mean, yes, you're seeing them. But since you're not having the 40 minute special periods, what does your day to day look like? My day to day um, is a lot of staring at a computer screen and keeping track of, it's between seven, I forget the exact figure, I have about between seven and 800 students. So their assignments are posted kind of on a weekly basis. So I usually spend Monday to about Wednesday um, kind of keeping track with, of students when they turn work in, um, logging their work, giving them feedback on their work. For certain grade levels, they're required to post an image so that I can actually see the work and give them some feedback on it. Um, and then usually Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, I spend planning the next week's instruction and working on my videos for that. So even though I'm not getting to do um, live classes with them, I do like the instruction to come from me. So I, you know, videotape myself going through the steps of um, the project and introducing the projects myself. Um, sometimes I find other videos that might be helpful for them along with it, but that's pretty much it. So it's day to day, it's kind of lonely, <laughs> um, but it's busy. I want to say it's it's definitely it's way harder you know I don't like to sit for long periods of time I don't like to be on a computer I miss um, working with students as they develop a project you know where I get to see all the steps and we get to talk about it in the middle of it um, give them ideas on the fly and I don't really get to do that in real time anymore you know, I have students who will send me a picture halfway through and say, what do you think I should do from here? Um, but you know, it's not that instant feedback that you're used to getting. So I miss that. I miss the seeing every step of the project and seeing their progression. So at this point, I usually only get to see, you know, the final picture of what they, they post when they're done. Right, yeah. Like you said, you don't get to see the be it's it's like a story the beginning mm -hmm. the middle the end you're only telling them what to do in the beginning and then there you go you're right at the end i mean yeah. there's no middle there's no there's no middle ground like there mm -hmm. was well and i think you using the word story is exactly it you know um art tells a story Okay. And for, especially for my middle schoolers, you know, the way I approach their projects is um, in such a way that there's a goal or a skill or a technique in mind, but I like for them to bring something of their own to it. Like instead of everyone making many copies of the same exact project, I like it when the results are varied. Um, and that's harder to do now. So most of the projects are more geared towards kind of the same thing because we don't have that that instant feedback like hey mrs broomhead can i do such and such and like, yeah absolutely let me get you the supplies for that um you know we don't have that and supplies is the other issue you know i was only able to send home like one thing with each grade level so first grade got watercolors second grade um got markers so trying to plan instruction around very limited supplies is also hard you know? ooh, ooh, yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. very hard because, like you said, one grade level you get that, like, and you have to uh, sh share sh share what's being said. And, yeah, yeah, and I hope to goodness, I hope next come September, you guys can get back to the ways of teaching the normal way because it, uh, I give you guys credit. My mom said it because she's over at special services. They've been virtual since 
They were virtual the week before Thanksgiving. They went back a week, and now they're virtual till mid-January. So, right. and, and I guess if there's a, a good thing about it is your specials are being taped. So that, that way, like, you won't, I mean, you're assuming they're all coming, but you won't be there live. Just, yeah. Yeah, and that was actually something we decided um, early on in the school year. The specials area teachers, we all sat down and we just decided, um, you know, what's going to be the most, let's try to keep things consistent. Let's make this as easy as we can for parents who are doing this at home with their students. Um, I didn't want one of us to post things one way and somebody else to do it a different way. Um, so we decided to post all of our work on Monday mornings and have it due the following Monday morning. Um, you know, mainly for the reason that even though they're scheduled a day, like, you know, today's day two, go home and do your art today because you're supposed to have art on day two or whatever it is. We know that that's not always going to be the case. You know, parents are working. Um, students themselves have other obligations. Uh, you know, as the mom of a second grader and a teacher in the school, we don't do all of our specials on the assigned day. You know, it, it kind of like fits in on the nights that we're able to do it. Um, so we wanted to keep it as easy as possible um, as far as how things are posted, where they're posted, making sure we were doing things consistently amongst the special areas teachers because it just, it just worked out better that way. Yeah, and, and, this pandemic has brought a lot of challenges with it. And I think right up there with you guys, not just saying, I'm not just pinpointing at Seekin specifically. I think that there's, there's a lot of it issues when it comes to that in other districts because you don't, it's like, Get, it's like a guessing game almost I would guess mm -hmm. yeah and, you know I mean I've had people ask me oh when do you think this will this will reopen when do you when do you think the other dreams will reopen I don't know nobody we knows <laughs> we would love to reopen in the spring yeah and one of the first questions I said I wear. I would wear a mask, and I could see how things. And uh, if you need my, if you would like my ideas of how to, you know, and how I would incorporate things, I'll gladly give you the way I think, the way I would see things being done, because the, we're trying to bring it back. We just don't know how. Right. Yeah. And I, and I think that's the hardest part. Um, but I think you're right. It's going, it can't be one person's decisions or ideas too. You're right. It's going to take um, listening to a lot of different viewpoints and how to do things. Yeah. And I mean, and I mean, one of our biggest hurdles and in other programs too, is the volunteers. You can't have the old, the ways of when you've been out there, when other people have been out there, who knows if you can have the one-on-one. -on -one the one-on-one, -on -one. yeah. And a lot of them need it. Yeah. So then it becomes a question of, do you put that on, if we, if in, well, there's no if, we'll definitely bring it back. Yeah. Don't know when. It's not when. We just don't know the when. <laughs> we just don't know the uh, when. And it's like, when we bring it back, do we put, until things calm down, do you put that on, do you put that on a uh, parent to say, okay, you've been around the kid. Mm -hmm. do you do the, like, like, you know, there's so many unanswered pieces to the it's a it's a puzzle and I get people asking me oh do you think we'll be back I can't answer that and I'm not even putting volunteers together till you, till you give me the green light right 
because I'm not doing all that work. And then, and then emailing everybody back, oh, sorry, we're not having a season. Thanks for volunteering, but we don't need you now. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> And I, and I, you know, in the, in the end, I mean, we're, we're just right here with, uh, joking aside, but I, I started that over the summer, putting stuff together for fall, and it's, and it's like sad, like you don't want to say that to somebody, because it's like you're turning them away, away, and then, Right, but I, I think, um, I think that's the big hurdle right now and i think what people are finding out about themselves is um you know what is our capacity to be understanding and patient like that is that is key you know with everything with everything from the schools and teaching to restaurants opening or not movie theaters opening or not field of dreams starting again um you know and to have those things in place for when you are able to um and it's just a level of patience that we all need to have. <laughs> yeah, and and you know I'm being extremely patient with it. I mean, I'm not I'm not back to work yet. I have I have two offerings out there that uh, I said March mm -hmm. a school system, and then sure sure medical offered me one of their desk positions but i said okay that's great but i don't think i'll be back there anytime soon mm -hmm. yeah yes you know uh, a, 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 a waiting a waiting game that's what it is right yeah so so what's new other otherwise i mean i haven't seen you since what oh well, probably since the last time that we all well, volunteered at Field of Dreams, I think. It was two June, one. Well, it wouldn't have been this past June. June. So it would have been the one prior to it that, was, right? It was 19. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's just, you know, and I when I had Mr. Broom had on a couple of weeks ago, he and I didn't know this either, Quinn's in Absecon School. She is, yes. Um, it was a decision we made when she was in kindergarten, when she was five years old and entering kindergarten, um, Egg Harbor Township, where we live, still had half day kindergarten. They currently offer full day, but that didn't happen, um, until I think last year, maybe the year before. It's like brand um, new. Mm -hmm, yeah, it is new. So, um, the only decision for us to have full day kindergarten for her was to bring her to Absecon with us and we're so fortunate that we're able to do that um and we just decided that she um should stay you know we we went back and forth about whether or not to move her um but you know we know that the um schedule for it at least was going to be the same for us you know we didn't want there with both of us working in the school district uh if she was in school in egg harbor township there might have been days where we had issues with um timing or days off um, you know, where we would have needed childcare for her, or if, you know, they happen to have a professional development day and we're in school. Um, so it just worked out to be the, the best decision for us as a family. And she loves it there, has really great teachers, obviously, has really um, bonded and has some great friendships um, in Absecon. And she also, da her dance school is also in Absecon. So, um, you know, so she has a lot of friend base there and is really involved. So it just, um, and with, you know, every school district having different types of virtual schedules this year, it was definitely the right decision for us because her schedule will, you know, match ours. Right. And, and like you said, and like we said, and like I was told the different grade levels start at different times and that that's another herd that's another thing that you would have had to worry about mm -hmm. and her to ehd because they start later than yes yes so she would have needed before care or i would have had to have you know someone be able to free to put her on the bus in the morning after we leave so yeah. it just um it's just one of those things that happened to work out and we're so fortunate that we're able to do it yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they say uh, things, uh, you know, they work for the for the good and I, that's just one example. I mean, things fall into place. And so so you're re almost ready for Christmas? You've done? I think done. so. I think we're pretty much set. We have a little more baking that we're gonna do um, this evening. But other than that, you know, I think I'm done all the wrapping I need to do. We have, um, food shopped, we've got everything in place that we need. You know, okay. traditions are gonna be a little different this year. So, um, but it's all part of, I think it's the same for everybody. Things are changing. Right, yeah. traditions, traditions might look just like this. It's, it's actually, this is what, you know, typically on um, Christmas Eve, we head to my parents' house and have dinner there and exchange gifts with all of my sisters and out there um you know so we're going to be doing it on the computer like we've kind of gotten together with my family weekly anyway via just zoom this platform you know for game nights and things so we're just going to exchange our gifts via zoom this year on christmas eve yeah um, so and i'm sure we're not the only ones oh, oh no i i don't i i think my my dad's side of the family, I think we're doing, probably doing something similar. My grandmother's cooking and she's just, you know, delivering. Like, here, you throw it in, throw, throw your chicken in the oven. When you <laughs> it in. But it's, I mean, if that's what you have to do to make ends meet this year, that's what right. you have to do. Right. It's true. Everybody's got to do their part, keep everybody else safe. It's safe, yeah. And that's you know, just the way it's going to be. And hopefully next year will be different. And, you know, years from now, we'll all look back and say, hey, you remember that Christmas when? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, you remember that Christmas when? When we weren't allowed to really leave home? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, I guess, how it's going to be. I mean, Whatever we have to do, we have to do. It's, it's just, you know, like, like for example, was I just thought of something when we were talking about school system. Was today a half day for the school? Today was a half day um, for, I think, all groups for both buildings. They were done pretty much half day. It didn't really... Um, change the time slot really for my daughter's Google Meet. It kind of fit into her normal time slot anyway. Um, but teachers were done half day scheduled today, yes. So, so what, how did, um, here we go, you just brought up Google Meet. Uh, so what does that mean? Like one meet, a, what are they, one meet a day? Um, you know what, it depends on the students. Um, the virtual, because we've been virtual, um, all virtual, Friday started the all virtual, and then the three days this week were virtual from home for all students. Um, so her, the different grade levels have different meet times to kind of get in their um, academics. So it depended on the grade level, depended on the teachers, um, when they were scheduling certain things. And certain grade levels, some grade levels had special events today, and yesterday, so their times were kind of um, determined by the grade level team together so that they weren't kind of overlapping each other's. Because you probably remember Dickens Fest, yes? Oh, yes. <laughs> so that... Dickens Fest had to be virtual this year. So, you know, yesterday um, and the day before, they kind of did some of the workshop stuff where they had their history presentation and the science one and things like that. Yeah. Yes, so. I mean, I mean, there was no, there was no, uh, and I'm gonna sound funny here. There was no caroling. There was no dancing. No caroling. No dancing this year. <laughs> and no feast. Well, yeah. well I guess you, mm, yeah, no feast. But no yes, feast. yes, I remember Dickens Fest. There was that was that was fun. I mean, mm -hmm. and it, and that's and that's going on like they. have that's been yeah. a lot of years. I want to say we're into well into the teens 
I think this year might have been 19 of them, if I remember correctly. Was, uh, I could look it up. I have all the um, programs kind of saved on my computer from every year. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, because uh, I'm sure uh, Barb Sabbath, she was part of that. She was part of the first few, yep, before she retired. Before she. Yeah. Some, like we said, some traditions are still around, but some have changed mm -hmm. in light of what's going on and other things that are going on. It's funny, I, I had, I was reading something about New Year's resolutions and, and, and I was reading and people are going, let's just have a better year than what this year was. Right? Like, uh, yeah, that's like, I think that's everybody's resolution. Right? That is true. Yeah. I, think so too. I mean, uh, anything just to, so we don't go with this year was, I mean. Right. I, I, rem I was uh, interning at special services in one of the secretary offices. They had me in, I was, they were looking to hire somebody and then they asked me, could you, do you think you could sit in there for for the remainder of the year? They said, you know how to answer the phone on the computer? I said, sure, I'll do it till June, February, February, and then I would have left in June. I left in March, and they go, uh, well, don't worry. When, uh, if the school ever reopens again, you can go back to where you were. But uh, school, but that was one of the positions where they did asked me if I would come back. I said, yeah, I'll come back when the pandemic is over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's hope that that's, you know, next the beginning of next school year. Let's hope you get in there and uh, yeah. you get back to work. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I was walking virtually. I was, I mean, I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and sit till, till God knows when looking. I mean, I, I've talked to people. They go, you're the absolute perfect fit, but, but positions like they're all the way in Marlton or stuff. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, it would be wonderful, but you and, uh, and I, we don't live around there. And then right. we like an hour to work and then yeah. go home. And who knows? It's too know, far. Too far. If I lived a little closer, sure. Yeah. Challenge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I've just been kind of enjoying my time doing this, helping, helping feel the dreams out a little bit with, with a little bit that I can do from the computer. Mm hmm So what have you been doing on the side? I see you've been busy with your cake. Yes. Um, let's see, busy on the side. I also, um, years and years and years ago, I used to paint ornaments for craft shows and I would do craft shows here and there. Um, and then once we had our daughter, I kind of stopped doing that. It was a little, um, when she was younger, it was like, well, I can't really set up all these glass ornaments and expect her not to touch them <laughs> to work on them. Um, so that kind of became that was part of the issue. And recently, over the last two years, I opened up an Etsy store um, for hand-painted ornaments, just one item, and it's um, a house. So basically you can send a picture and have your house or anyone's house kind of painted on the ornament as a gift. So I found that they are very popular for housewarming, so it stays pretty busy throughout the year. Um, wedding gifts, um, but obviously more busy right around Christmas because, you know, it is an ornament. So um, I just kind of got done with my last orders and shipped them out a couple weeks ago, the ones that were guaranteed by Christmas anyway. Um, but I also have found that realtors have been contacting me um, outside of Etsy and also order them as gifts for their clients who have recently purchased homes. 
So that little side business actually keeps me busier than the cakes. <laughs> oh, wow. I, yeah. yeah. It's funny you said that. I didn't even think about the whole realtor thing, but now it makes sense because... Makes perfect sense, yeah. Perfect sense yeah. because yeah. people, like you said, and they, I had heard from somebody else that uh, the um, if... The housing market is actually doing well in the pandemic. It is. It is. I have noticed that too. Um, there's, uh, well, I think, you know, it's a supply demand thing. Like mm -hmm. people want to take advantage of the low interest rates. Um, but there's also not a whole lot of people who in the middle of all this want to pick up and move. They kind of want to stay put. So there's, it's a good time to sell. And there's a lot of buyers out there who are looking to buy. So it's, you know, it is the one, it is the one business that kind of hasn't been affected as much as others. Yeah. Uh, At least from what I can see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just been, uh, yeah. And real, and that's, I, I never knew that with you and the, uh, ornaments for the houses yeah 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 that's like i said that's fairly new that's probably the only thing that's new <laughs> yeah. And then, oh. yeah that's about it that's i mean nothing new with me me just trying to get people that i promised dates to do this before the year's out before right. we start because i i got people asking Couple people haven't got gotten back to me, so they're they're going back in the bottom, in the bottom again. <laughs> Moving down on the list a little bit. Jacqueline, oh, I haven't for, forgot about them. Just let me know when when they're ready. Right. But this is one of those, um, you know, pandemic discoveries that everyone's making. Things that they. You know, finding new hobbies, finding new things that they're good at, yeah. um, having, you know, larger amounts of time at home like we all had, especially last spring. You know, like you said, we all found different um, strengths. So there are some good things, you know, and I think that's important to kind of focus on what good things kind of came out of all of this. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, and it's funny, I, I, I was... After I was at a dinner meeting for Atlantic City, I guess it, it's two two years ago now. Somebody go, somebody goes, oh, why don't you why don't you start a podcast? Why don't I said, no, I I would love to do it, but I really I don't have the time. I said I was at special services. I, I was working in the restaurant. I said I've got field of dreams on the weekends. Um doing some other things with some other people. I think I was helping AC, ACIT out from time to time. I said, no, I don't have the time <laughs> to put all this together. together. And, and, then, and then the person contacted me again and says, well, well, don't you know, we're in a pandemic. Why don't you try it? And so yeah. I, I thought, hmm. I thought, you know what? I will try it, and people have agreed to it, which has been nice. But 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 what I've been told is, when I get to the harder, higher level guests, like the like uh, I may have somebody big on from time to time if I can get a hold of them. They they are very hard to get a hold of, which I can understand. I right? working oh well, yeah virtually and all that. So yeah, but yeah. you're very good at it. So whoever told you that you know, hey, you should try this out, um, they were spot on, right? Yeah, and I will say thank you because yep. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I I wasn't. You know, you don't, you don't think, I wasn't thinking 
this at that time, someone say, oh, why don't you try this? And I'm like, hmm, why don't I try this? Yeah. It's worked out well. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy at how it's taken off and people have said, oh, we'll do it, we'll do it. I mean, I mean, I've got a couple couple tapings next week that will be aired at later later dates for like when I when I go back to work and I don't have all this free time mm-hmm. to be uh, because that that's what I'll start doing all these tapings ahead for because I won't have time to be talking to people or right. anything like that. So I guess I will I don't I hope I will see you in person sooner rather than later. Let's hope, right? Let's hope. I mean Let's hope that this spring we can get back on the field of dreams and we can come but, volunteer and Yeah, because you I said this to other groups. You guys at Seekins one of one of my favorites and one of one of the the best the best group we have because you come out and like you just don't bring one or two of you out a bunch of you come out so that way we can go oh you get this person you get that person because when they come out in these small groups it's like um i don't know what to do here yeah it's a little harder that actually happened to me a couple times. Um, I was well, working, I was working at Shore, and somebody had contacted me. Oh, I don't think I can make it tonight. Do you have any anybody left over? And somebody said to me from the school, it might have been uh, Kim Kuchio said to me. Next time that happens, why don't you reach out to one of us? And, and I'm like, it's a good idea, but I mean, I took her up on the idea, but it's like, okay, how many people am I going to get in a six hour time frame when they email me at noon? Right. All right. Well, you'd be surprised. I will. Probably I, have a big turnout from I our will. school anyway. I will try it next time. Definitely. Definitely. You're, you know, you know it's a special place. <laughs> yes, I I I do know that. So I hope you have a Merry Christmas, happy, healthy new year. Thank you, and same to you and your parents and your sister. Thank you. And you know, like you said, hopefully in the future we'll uh be able to see each other in person and again and not on the screen. <laughs> yeah, and not on the screen. I mean, yeah, the screen the screen conversations are nice, but in person it's just a little bit nicer. It is a little bit nicer, that's true. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This was wonderful. Thank you. I will talk to you soon. Yes. Okay.